going to take the north and never give it back. So that's a good pick. You get the corner. I got to go bold, right? I got to go bold for this. Oh, yeah. She's, She's got some nice. Welcome back to the Unbearable Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Brad Barron. Make sure to like and subscribe out there on YouTube and rate the show five stars everywhere that you get your podcast. What is good? I am back from the North Woods of Wisconsin. As you could tell, I had to rock the flannel. Got a little vacation stubble going on. And today, I just want to kind of go through a lot of what was going on while I was out. <laughs> there's there's a lot of news. We got to talk about some Caleb Williams news. And we also got to talk about some rumors out there about Jonathan Allen going to the Bears. We'll break that down. And also talking about what is actually going on with the number nine pick because now there's more and more rumors talking about the number nine pick being an offensive tackle or a wide receiver. We're going to break that all down. And also, forgot to say this, rate this show five stars ev everywhere you get your podcast, especially Apple Podcast. Then you'll be in the running for a Darnell Wright jersey. And also, we're hoping to get 5,000 subscribers by the time of the draft. So help us out and hit that subscribe button. Got a lot more draft coverage for you. But let's get started, shall we? So the big news that I want to talk about is let's not talk about any other quarterback at number one besides Caleb Williams. And the reason why is because this came out from the Chicago Tribune from Dan Wiederer earlier this week. And he said Caleb Williams is coming to Hallis Hall next week. In fact, uh, next week, in fact, which is now going to be this week, first week in April. And there's an increasing likelihood Williams will soon have his own key card to the building plus a locker stall and the distinction as the Chicago Bears new quarterback one part of this part of next week's visit in Lake Forest will be about building really uh, be about relationship building with Williams getting to better know the Bears coaching staff and ideally a few of the current players who may be around that's from Dan Wiederer and you see this too, this has been a, a a piece that everybody has kind of known about, that he is going to be the person, and this is just different to hear it from a Dan Wiederer saying, basically, this dude could literally have his own have his own locker, have his own keys to the palace type of deal. So that is something that's really exciting because then we don't have to worry about this. And so ultimately, I'm not going to be doing any mocks that are showing uh, the Bears not getting Caleb Williams just because it seems like it's a all but done deal and even if you don't believe that Gerard Mayo the new head coach of the New England Patriots says he, uh, there was a report saying Gerard Mayo says everyone knows what Chicago will do at number one it's it, it, it's just going to happen right it's just simply going to happen so while I was enjoying the, the nice peaceful tranquility of the north woods of Wisconsin as it's as it's snowing down Caleb Williams still was making headlines. I checked my phone and I just want to talk about his phone. And I want to break that all down because Caleb Williams has kind of ironed this out. And I'm one that I normally don't like talking about this stuff. I have kind of stayed away. Those that have listened religiously to this show, I stay away with a lot of this, these pieces because I simply don't care. So I, I don't want to talk about this too much, but we can just break this down. If you live under a rock, you probably don't know what was going on. But basically what was happening is that uh, during a USC basketball game, women's basketball game, Caleb Williams was shown holding a what looks like a pink phone with pink nail polish and a pink phone or a pink wallet and bright pink lipstick. And ultimately that just sent the Internet <laughs> into a frenzy saying we can't draft this person. We can't. But then there's also former NFL players like a Clay Harbor, even like a Kyle Long kind of talking about this and basically standing up for Caleb for this and saying basically the moral of the story is that if a player, as long as it's about the work ethic and the dedication, no one cares in the locker room. And just as long as you're putting your best foot forward and you're winning games, winning cures all. But even with all this like kind of craziness that's going on, this is what Caleb Williams had to say yesterday on Thursday about this whole situation. Well, it's been a long week for you. Lucky you got me, though. 
Let's see what that phone looks like. What the phone looks like? <laughs> Let's see what color the phone is. The wallet white. The wallet is white. Phone, phone is pink. Case is clean. What the fuck is that? Like? Nails are clear. Lips, lips are pink. Your, your girl love them. <laughs> so, for those that are listening on the show, you might have already seen this. I've reposted this. It's just, it's him talking to, I think it's the um, uh, social media, like someone who's in like player relations at USC, interviewing him and just kind of solidifying. And now when you look at the picture, you go, oh yeah, the wallet is white. The phone is, you know, the phone is pink. The case is clear. And we all know like those, the different iPhones that they have the pink piece. And yeah, he's not wearing lipstick and everything like that. But I just want to say, who cares? I just want to like end it with that because this is going to be the quarterback. And to me, I like this. I like that he's fiery. I like that he posted a video essentially kind of talking back to those people that were giving him crap. And Kyle Brandt said this on Good Morning Football, and I couldn't agree more. Where what he said, I firmly agree with, and I retweeted that. But one of the things I love that he said was that the Chicago Bears – we haven't had a good quarterback, and this is different. The lot, and he's like, you know, we went from a Mitch Trubisky who was a Boy Scout. We go from a Jay Cutler who was a curmudgeon to Justin Fields who was a robot, and this guy's a rock star. And I've said this before on the show. He reminds me of like a Jim McMahon, where Jim McMahon rubbed people the wrong way. Some people just flat out didn't like Jim McMahon, and that's just who he was. He was just this kind of show type of a player and it's going to rub people the wrong way and I know some people out there say it's not going to fly in a locker room well what does Ryan Pohl say because I know a lot of people out there out there says if it didn't come from Ryan Poles it's just a rumor Ryan Poles said this when you talk about Caleb Williams when you talk to his teammates they don't like him they love him it's his leadership how he brings people together same goes with the staff I'm having a hard time finding a person who doesn't like him or even love him and doesn't think he can reach the highest limits. The feedback has been good. And I want to say this again. This has been reported multiple times from credible sources that the Chicago Bears, as they should, have been doing their due diligence for months on Caleb Williams. They have been sending people to his hometown. I believe it was Albert Breer, for those that want to have sources, Albert Breer, who posted this out in and talked about how the Chicago Bears have been sending these fleets of people to gather intel and information about Caleb Williams and talk to his teammates, talk to people he grew up with everywhere. They are doing their due diligence. And I know some people just don't want to buy it. They say, well, I know that, you know, this random person on the internet said that they have dirt. I guarantee you that the Chicago Bears know that dirt, know what that is, because they didn't just talk to one guy. They talked to multiple people. They have sent multiple people out, and everything is coming back aces. And the great Neil deGrasse Tyson once said, he talked about this, how people come up to him, and they ask him, they say, prove to me that the moon landing was real. And he says, okay, well, what would it take for me to prove to you that the moon landing was real? And he said, and you know, someone says, I need this, this, and this, like, here's three reasons. And you, if you prove that to, you know, you need to prove these three things. And then he says, okay, if I prove those three things to you, will you be convinced? Will you then believe that the moon landing was real? And the person said, no. And he said, okay, then you just don't want to be convinced. And I think it's fair. If you just don't like them, it's fair. But I just wanted to say this out. And yet again, I don't like talking about this stuff because it's not football. It's like it, literally everything comes back and watch the pro day, like watch the pro day as well. He's being tackled and mauled by his teammates. Everything points to him being a good teammate and a leader of men. Yes. Just like a normal person. If you switch jobs, you have to gain the respect of everyone around you. I feel comfortable with Caleb Williams. And if you don't, you know, it's, you might just not like him, <laughs> but Let's move on because I've already taken up like nine minutes talking about this. Let's talk about the nitty gritty. Let's talk about the fun stuff. Let's talk about Jonathan Allen. So the Jonathan Allen rumor. Now, anytime that I talk about a rumor, I want to make sure that we understand. Is this a rumor because someone knows something or is this a rumor because somebody created an article like matching a player or just kind of like a 
hypothetical that, hey, what if the Bears did this? What if the Bears did that? It is that situation. It is not someone who has inside information. It's not a, well, maybe they'll do this. This was Christopher Knox of Bleacher Report really kind of pairing up if Jonathan Allen were to be traded, where would he go? And the Bears are the most logical option for that trade to happen. I know we talked about this in the offseason. If the Bears were going to trade back, you know, earlier on, we were doing some mocks of if they went this way or if they went that way. But with this, what Christopher Knox had to say, the Chicago Bears, who acquired an extended sweat, would be a sensible suitor for Allen if Washington is willing to make him available. They had a stout defensive front after adding Sweat last season and bringing in Allen could give them a truly elite defensive line. Now, when you hear that, it doesn't say, hey, maybe this happened. Or like, hey, I know someone that says the Bears are interested. This doesn't show interest. This just simply is someone matching the player with the team. So I just kind of want to make that clear a little bit. But it doesn't get me away from wanting to at least just hypothetically say, what would this even look like if the Bears were to go after Jonathan Allen? Because a little bit about Jonathan Allen, defensive tackle, he's going to be 29 this year, and he turns 30 at the end of the season, so he'll be 29. And this guy is a menace in the middle. Just simply put, PFF credited him with over 30, 30 or more hurries in the past four seasons. Six sacks, PFF says six sacks last season, eight the season before, and 10 the season after, I mean, even before that, but also last year, he had a quote unquote down year, according to PFF's grading system, 59.7 grade. But when you look at the reasons why it was because of his run defense, 37.9. Do I think he's regressing in that mean? No, I just think he was simply unhappy there. This is still a very, very talented defensive tackle, and he's not yet kind of over that magical year 30 type of a hump. And This is where it gets into the interesting part. If they were to trade for him, what does that salary cap look like? Well, his cap hit this year, he has two years left on his deal, and the average salary is $18 million, and his cap hit for the next two seasons, 21.4, and then 23 next season. So, this opens up this big question of, so when you think about the, first off, when you think about the salary cap, his hit could be 18 up to that 21.4 because sometimes think of it like the Khalil Mack deal. When the bears got rid of him, his cap hit was 30 million, but after they got rid of him, it went down to his kind of base average salary. It all depends on the, the trading and other things like that. So think of it 18 million to 21 million. So that brings up the big question. Would it even work out? And I think that is the bigger, the bigger key. If you propose this at the beginning of the off season, you would say, yes, this could potentially happen. But first thing is we have to look at the draft capital. Now, when I first heard this, I'm like, well, maybe we could trade the third round pick and the fourth for him. But I threw that into PFF's mock draft simulator and it gave it a 0% chance of happening. (laughs) And so if they wanted to get rid of him, maybe you could get that discount. But ultimately, when you're looking at kind of the fair market rate for what Jonathan Allen could potentially go for, You're really looking at the Bears trading the number nine pick and then getting number 36 or number 40, one of those early second rounders that the Washington Commanders have and Jonathan Allen in that package. So it's almost like they're trading up for like an offensive lineman and getting that. So is that enough for you? Would you actually entertain that idea? Because we'll talk about who's available a little bit later. But when I see that, I don't necessarily love it. Um, but that is what you would most likely get. Maybe a late third, maybe a late day three type of a pick on top of it. But you're not going to be getting like an absolute haul for that number nine pick. It's going to be a early second and then maybe a late day three. But then the last little bit that would have to work out is the cap space. The Bears currently have twenty three million dollars in cap space, and also if you factor in the draft picks, the Bears would have around thirteen million ish in cap space once you factor in the draft picks, top 51, and other things like that. So, and just for anyone that's looking out there going, wait a second, it would it would be more like 10. It would be 13, top 51, and other things like that. So you're looking at around 13 million-ish. And typically with the Bears, they want to have $7 million in cap space. And, you know, 7 million, 10 million to go into the season. 
And that's where I've also brought up the idea of the Bears signing a veteran. So if they did this, they really wouldn't have a lot of cap space left. So what they would have to look into is they might have to extend Keenan Allen, which the report is the Bears would be interested in doing, but they have an order of operations, which got people a lot, which got a lot of people thinking, well, <clears throat> maybe it's going to be Tevin Jenkins that gets the next extension, and then it's going to be Keenan Allen after that. Because Keenan Allen, around like that $23 million cap hit, you can really lower that if you give him another extension and then just kind of push some of that money out. And then the last option, if they can't do that, they can always restructure contracts. And does that sound like something Ryan Poles would do? No. <laughs> it doesn't sound like it's something he would do. But just for the sake of discussing it, if they were to do this or if they were to trade back, just seeing who's available in that second round is kind of a fun little exercise. Because if they got the 36 pick, Right now, the majority of people have Kingsley, the offensive tackle out of BYU, going at pick 36, or at pick 40, the defensive end, Braylon Trice, out of Washington, going at that pick 40. But if you look at who else they might be able to get and what might be available around that time, you're really looking at a lot of those second wave of wide receivers. The Keon Coleman's out of Florida State, Lad McConkey's out of Georgia, Troy Franklin out of Oregon, Xavier Leggett, South Carolina, Roman Wilson out of Michigan, and Ricky Pearsall out of Florida. And then Zach Frazier, the offensive, the center out of West Virginia, could be a good person that if the Bears really want to solidify that offensive front, the Bears have brought him in for a top 30 visit. He could be that pick at 36 or 40. Or if they wanted to go offensive tackle, he might be looking realistically, like we said, at Kingsley out of BYU. Karan, the offensive tackle out of Yale, and Patrick Paul, the offensive tackle out of Houston. And last but not least, defensive ends. We've broken down Chris Braswell, Braylon Trice, and Marshawn Neeland could be defensive ends that they get out there. So let me know what you think. Would you actually do that deal? Um, it's good that you would get a second round pick. It's good that you would get this kind of stud defensive tackle. But I just think that in this phrase, phase of the game, like I said, I just think that it's very unlikely. I also feel, too, Jonathan Allen, the reason why people say he's on the trade block, quote-unquote, even though he's not technically on the trade block, is because he what he said at the end of the season where he was basically wanting out of Washington. Now they have a brand new front off. They have all sorts of new people in, this, in, the, in Washington, so that could definitely change his opinion. They've added so many other people. That could... That's the reason why he's kind of out there on the trade block. So let's finish up this show because we're, we're getting to kind of that 20-minute mark right now. Let's talk about the last little subject. The hype is rising around these offensive tackles. And what I mean by that is before, I've always talked about this where I don't necessarily think that the Bears should go offensive tackle early just because I am a big fan of Braxton Jones. I think he had... He had his neck injury last season, and I think that there's a lot of potential there. But if the Bears see the right offensive tackle that would be available, and they think that maybe if they do believe that Braxton Jones could be a guard or even like a Darnell Wright could be a guard, I think it does make sense because we talked about the salary cap situation. The Bears could move on from a Nate Davis and say, listen, this was a bad pick. This was a bad signing. We don't think he's going to move up. We don't think he's going to get back to a level of play that is acceptable and we're going to move on. So that is, those are all things that could potentially happen because the bears do have the salary cap space to move on from a contract like that. And we know Ryan Poles, if he makes a mistake, he's more than fine saying, I'm just going to move on and let's just get better. So the reason why there's, there's just a lot of different posts going out there. The bears are bringing in and interviewing Fawanga and Fontenu and all sorts of offensive linemen, but also Courtney Cronin, who has a very, very good pulse on the Chicago Bears, just kind of talked about the uh, Ryan Poles interview that she was a part of. And she said to me, from what he, Ryan Poles, said, I believe the direction at pick number nine will be either wide receiver or offensive tackle. And yet again, she's not proclaiming it officially or anything like that, but it's just the vibe. And when you think about who would be available, the Bears, by all reports, are super high on Malik Neighbors. You look online, 
Seems like the Bears love neighbors, and I've talked about it before. Neighbors and Caleb Williams seem to be best buddies on the sideline at the Combine. Malik Neighbors <laughs> ran like, what, a 4-3-5 at his pro day? Malik Neighbors, though, out of LSU, it's unlikely that he's going to be there for the Bears and maybe even with Roma Dunze. Both of them, traditionally, now based on the mock drafts, if you look consensusly, is going 5-6. and six. But one of those could definitely drop. I would think that would be more of Roma Dunze. And what I think that the Bears are doing is I think they're doing their due diligence, and this is just my take. I think that they're doing their due diligence on Malik Neighbors and Roma Dunze so that if one of those players are available to them at pick number nine, and same thing with Brock Bowers because they are bringing him in for a top 30 visit as well, with those receivers, I feel they're bringing them in to say, if these players are available, are they worth staying at nine so that we don't have to move back? Are they worth because there's a lot of good wide receivers, a lot of good tight ends in this, or not a lot of good tight ends, but there's some depth to this tight end class. But Brock Bowers is seemingly this blue chip, can't miss tight end prospect. So if one of those receiving options are available, do they feel comfortable taking them and not taking more picks by trading back? So I want to talk about this real quick, though. So if they were to trade back, because when I see them, doing their due diligence on offensive linemen and seeing that they still have a Braxton Jones, that they still have a Nate Davis, it gets me thinking about who would be available if they traded back. And what I like about them doing their due diligence on a Talese Fuanga out of Oregon or a Troy Fontenu out of Washington or even Olu Fashanu, who was a high school teammate, who was the high school left tackle for Caleb Williams. The reason why I like that is if they the Bears were to trade back, how many players would you feel comfortable drafting in the first round? Because if they trade back to kind of that teens area, like we've always projected, right? What if the, the Bengals want to trade up for a Brock Bowers or the Saints, they need an offensive lineman. So do they jump from 14 and give the Bears a good amount of capital to just move back five spaces? Because some of the players that would most likely be available, you look at wide receivers, Brian Thomas, wide receiver out of LSU, physical freak. Adonai Mitchell, wide receiver out of Texas, very fluid route runner, is turning a lot of heads, just hasn't necessarily had production in college compared to what you can kind of see on tape. Then the offensive tackles, like we talked about, Olu from Penn State, Fuwanga out of Oregon State, J.C. Latham out of Alabama, Troy Fontenew out of Washington, and Amarius Mims out of Georgia. And then everyone's favorite, Jackson Powers Johnson, the center out of Oregon, and then you look at the defensive linemen, Byron Murphy, Johnny Newton on the interior, and defensive ends, Jared Verse, Laiatu Latu, Chop Robinson. Some of those defensive linemen are going to be available. Jared Verse, I feel though, you would really you would only be able to get him if you move back to like 12 or or 13. I think he's that good. I think he's going to go a little bit earlier. But it gets you thinking. And I think that's why they wanted to at least look at the offensive tackles. Because this is a very, very, very deep offensive tackle class. And I think if they want to do that and still pick up one of these players and then think about this offensive lineman, this offensive line group, if you get a, let's just say, a Fawanga and you have a Darnell, Darnell Wright and Fawanga are your right, right tackle and left tackle. You have these big guys on at the tackle spots. You have Braxton Jones playing left guard, and then you have... Tevin Jenkins and the Bears extend him and now those four spots are pretty much locked down makes you feel a lot more comfortable bringing out Caleb Williams and then if you draft like a center later on whether it's Zach Frazier or any of these other center prospects you feel pretty darn good because Coleman Shelton is not a people mover at the center position but he's a smart veteran center that can help Caleb Williams learn and understand this offense so the offensive linemen, if they really feel like this is what they need to do, I, I mean, I'm fine with it. It's not what my first choice would be. But if you can trade back and if you feel more comfortable about these picks, trading back to me just seems too good because the Bears don't have a lot of that draft capital. But like I said, let me know what you think, though, down below in the comments. And also, we'll be going live on Sunday. The show will be back <laughs> After I took basically a week off from not being able to talk and also taking a week off to go on vacation 
Thank you all so much. Make sure to like and subscribe out there on YouTube. Also, rate the show five stars ever. You get your podcast. And with that, Unbearable Sports Podcast, we are out. Yeah, she's got some nice long hair and you notice know she's a brand